On this episode, we talk about the importance of networking and athletic training. Welcome to another episode of Inside the League. Have a, a really special guest today who is affiliated with the NBA in a special way, and I'll let her talk about that later. Welcome, Tierra Roll. Hello. Thank you for inviting me on, Joy. Thanks so much for coming on. So tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started in your role of athletic training. Okay. So... As Joy said, my name is T, uh, Dr. Tia Roll. I'm a physical therapist and an athletic trainer. So um, my career in the healthcare profession started um, or it came about when I was a kid. I was like in the third grade and my oldest sister at the time wanted to be a um, pediatrician. So I just wanted to be like her. So I was like, I want to be a pediatrician too. And um, long story short, the type of position changed over the years. And by the time I hit my senior year of high school, I wanted to um, go into sports medicine and become an orthopedic surgeon, and um, which led me to Florida State University. And so I ended up majoring in athletic training. And then after that, I decided to go to PT school because I wanted to add something else to my, um, to my resume, if you will. And so that led me to physical therapy and I figured like, hey, you know, this is a, a big overlap. And so I decided to go to physical therapy school and um, I still got that doctorate. So I, I can still call myself Dr. Roll, Doc T. And um, so that was a bonus. But I ended up um, going into working in the traditional outpatient orthopedic clinic as a PT for some time. And then I transitioned back into sports. And so, again, long story short, I got connected with US, U.S. soccer, USA volleyball, um, and then came around to working with uh, the NBA G League team, um, the Greensboro Swarm at the time in like 2021. And so this was like during COVID. So I ended up in the bubble. Um, the stories there. Wow. But in the bubble, you know, in the thick of COVID, quarantining, testing every day. Um, so I like, I did like a more of a contract situation there just for that time period. And then after that, I ended up, um, getting the opportunity with the team that I'm currently working with the capital city go, go, which is the NBA G league affiliate for the Washington wizards. And during the off season, I am doing things with the Washington wizards. So right now it's busy, 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 busy. Um, we went to combine a couple weeks ago and wow. now we're prepping for our, um, NBA draft workouts. So it's, there's a lot going on right now, which, you know, is another reason why I'm pretty busy right now um, getting ready for that. OK, so much I want to dive into that you talked about from the USA teams to how combines are like. But first, can you give some clarification about athletic training? Sometimes there are there's confusion, especially how people advertise themselves with performance training, athletic training, physical therapy. And so. How can you tell what athletic training is supposed to be and if someone's actually good at it? So I'm going to answer that in, in a couple of different ways, okay. um, maybe more than that. Um, first off, I'm just going to lay it out like this. If you have a well-rounded PT, a well-rounded athletic trainer, even a well-rounded um, chiropractor, and maybe you maybe can add another profession in that. If they're well-rounded, Honestly, we all will be able to do the same things if you're well-rounded. Um, however, that's going to be within our individual scopes of practice, within our, within our profession. Um, but to break that down a little bit more, to get more specific in terms of what that means, um, athletic training, traditionally, it's more of your athletic population. Um, and the traditional settings would be like, you know, in sports, whether it's pro, professional, at the grade school level, rec level. Um, but that has transitioned into a clinical setting as well, um, even more so now than it has been. Um, there has been the physician extender, 
um, where you're able to work with the physician and get more involved um, and have some experience, um, you know, even in some cases in, in the operating room. Um, obviously, you're not operating, but, you know, there's that opportunity as well. And then even more so getting into director roles um, within sports um, at whatever level that may be college, professional, high school. Um, but with athletic training, typically or traditionally, you're trained to be able to handle acute injuries. Um, you have that emergency preparation, um, and that tends to set you apart from physical therapy. Um, you can, you know, take other courses and educational um, routes to pick that up as a physical therapist. But that is like embedded within the athletic training curriculum. Um, and of course, when you think about taping, embracing and things of that nature, that's also a piece of it. Um, yes, there's the rehab as well. Mm -hmm. And I, as I said before, if you're well rounded, you will have strong points in all of those areas, no matter what, which of those professions I, I mentioned earlier. Got it. So you touched on how you uh, not only work with the USA team and then soccer and kind of bounce around back in, in the NBA and now with the G League. Talk about the similarities and differences, not only maybe in your work schedule or school work between the different leagues, but also kind of what you see as similarities and differences with the teams overall and how they function as an operating team. So my role with any of the national go governing bodies with Team USA um, is more of a network provider. So I don't work with them on a full t in a full time capacity. Um, that's by my choosing. Right. Um, I mean, I, there have been opportunities where I could have applied for full time positions, but as a network provider, you you go in. Um, you have an opportunity to travel with the team, whether it's domestically or internationally, for a given length of time. It can be a week. It could be three weeks. Um, it could be longer. If you're picking up more um, camps or competitions, you know, you can have an extended period of time that, that you're with these different teams. And so for me, I'm coming in. Um, the players are coming in. A lot of times um, you're seeing these players for the first time and you may not even see them again. Um, if, if I am working with, say, a specific age group, like your U-17s or your U-20s or something of that nature, mm -hmm. um, and you kind of pick up multiple camps, then I'll see some of those same players, um, again, if they're selected to participate, which a lot of times, you know, your you're good players, your star players, you're going to see them pretty uh, frequently. But my role is to be there to support them during the – training period and or competition period. So, you know, I'm, we're doing treatments, uh, evaluations, something comes up, um, a new injury, you know, we have to evaluate that, treat that. If they're able to continue to participate, that's something that we're managing throughout the tournament with the, um, the training period, mm -hmm. as well as um, making recommendations for when they leave and not, not just for those who are injured, but when, when that camp is over or the tournament is over, like, you know, I make recommendations. But again, it, for me, it's not necessarily a long term forward thinking because it's, it's only a short amount of time. I'm only seeing them just for that time period. Right. Um, so that's where my recommendations can come in. And may, I may recommend and say, hey, um, you know, this player would, you know, would need formal PT or formal athletic training. Um, formal rehab um, for this specific issue that they have going on. And in some cases too, you have, you have players who are all over the place. So <laughs> <laughs> they're bouncing around from city, you know, state to state, country to country. Right. So that also poses a challenge. So then with that comes the educational piece. So while you're with me, it's important that I educate you on what I have in front of me, what I find and, you know, what we can work on in this short amount of um, a short period of time. And so are the injuries typically brought to you because the player is aware of them or 
is it sometimes you're diagnosing them without them maybe even being knowledgeable because they're used to playing injured? So typically what happens, um, and this is the case for, I would hope any situation, um, there you, you're, ha you have an intake process, okay. a medical intake process. And so the players, um, they have to get physicals and submit this information to the national governing body. That information is provided. Um, me as a network provider, um, it varies from sport, sport or organization to organization. Um, but my, in my experience, at least with one of them, I've had the opportunity to do a chart review where I can look at players' medical history and see, you know, it, so I can prep for what's to come. You know, the Got players it. coming in, I have, I'm prepared for it. And in a lot of situations, they don't typically uh, bring in players who have a significant injury. Okay. Um, you know, maybe something minor, something chronic that's, you know, they've been dealing with. And in very few cases, it may, it may be something subacute, maybe acute, um, but they're still able to participate. And so they come in, they have something that we're dealing with. I'm doing an evaluation. Um, again, it's a short amount of time. So you have to, you know, prioritize, but doing the evaluation and then treating from there. And so what was your hiring process like? I know you said that kind of for one set of teams, you operate as a network provider. Is it as simple as, hey, I go on Indeed and put my application up and someone sees it? Um, is it like your traditional where you have kind of one or two rounds of interviews and then you're in? What was your process like? Yeah. So with, with Team USA, with their different sports teams, I had an inroad in different ways for each of the teams that I've, I've worked with. So with USA Volleyball, I connected with one of my former classmates from undergrad. Um, I, I knew that she had an affiliation with USA Volleyball. So I reached out to her, got a contact. Um, I contacted that person, took some time, and then eventually something came up. So then I had an opportunity to travel to uh, China and Peru just like last minute opportunities. Hey, we need somebody like, are you available? And at the time I was a travel PT and I was in between travel con contracts. So I was like, shoot, heck yeah. Like how many people can just drop everything at, you know, right. at a moment's notice and be like, yeah, let me go to China. That was me. <laughs> um, but with um, U.S. soccer, I was actually in an, I was contacted because I was already in the Team USA network, like the USAPT. Okay. So I did a, a sports medicine um, volunteer rotation. And that's a two week rotation where they take on athletic trainers, physical therapists, massage therapists, chiropractors, um, medical doctors um, in this program. And you can do a two week volunteer rotation where they house you, you're fed, um, you don't get paid and you have to, you know, you have to pay for your own transportation to the facility, but everything else is covered. So okay. in that scenario, I was able to get into their system, their network. And so when the, when each of the national governing bodies, the different sports teams, um, they have a need, sometimes they'll reach out to the USOPC personnel and say, hey, you know, we need coverage for this event, you yeah. know. And they might send out a blast email. So that's that's what happened with me. A blast email came and I was like, yeah, I'm available. So right. I took that opportunity. Um, USA Basketball, that actually came about with um, just with my current role. So full time with the Capital City Go-Go. Um, that's a year round experience. And like, okay. and I can tell you a little bit about what that looks like in comparison to me being a network provider. Yeah. Um, but with the Capital City Go Go, so the the um the guy who's over the medical program for USA Basketball, he used to be in the NBA for a number of years, a long long time, and so when he left the NBA, he took that role with USA Basketball, and so a lot of times um they'll have tournaments like all over the place, and so sometimes they'll come to DC and they'll actually use our facility, and so he came into the training room one day and um he he ask for something. And um, so we were talking and I was like, hey, you know, who do I need to talk to to get involved with USA Basketball? He was like, me? I was like, <laughs> let's, talk. <laughs> let's talk. So that's how that happened. Right. No, that's cool. It sounds like, especially for the students out there, it's important to, number one, start with the coalitions, the organizations that are the governing bodies, 
but make sure that you network, make sure that you figure out who knows who, open your mouth, talk to people so that you get an inroad when the opportunities do come up. Now, I know I'm going to get this question, so I have to ask you, are you able to attend every game? Like, do you actually get to sit and watch the games at all? So the games for my team or my yeah, games for the yeah. Wizards? Um, well, yes. <laughs> so my games for the Capital City Go-Go, yes, that's a part of my job. Um, I'm there front row on the bench. Um, something pops off, I'm jumping into action. Um, so, yes, I, I have to be there for every game. It, it's, I don't think I missed a game, actually. But if, okay. I, if I had to miss a game, it would be an emergency situation. Okay. All right, that I knew I was gonna get that question, so I wanted to get that one off. So super informative, uh, definitely highlighting how you not only can just work for one team, but you can actually have multiple roles. Sounds like with multiple organizations, you know, if you structure your time accordingly and figure out how to do it, um, but you get That's to be front row in the action. Um, tell everybody here where they can find you and what you have going on next. You can find me on Instagram at the TNT effect, um, or you can just type in my name and it'll come up uh, to your role. I'm on Facebook, same thing to your role, uh, LinkedIn to your role. <laughs> um, I have a website. It's uh, the TNT effect at um, dot com. So that's T N T or actually T H E the T N T E F F E C T dot com. And so that's where you can find me. And I think that's it. I am not on TikTok. I am not on Twitter. Um, those are not my preferred sources of social media. <laughs> no problem. Listen, I think and you have a sufficient number that those who are interested can definitely reach out to. I want to thank you again for coming on and sharing, taking the time out of your schedule to put people on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs>